Hello. <laughs> I've actually um, today I've borrowed a uh, from work a Anan seven thousand DLE. Now this is um, this is the Mark II version, and um, I've I've been playing with this um, pretty much most of the morning, and I've I've had a, a a bit of a mooch round with it and I'm very very impressed the software's much improved um, since the earlier um, sort of uh, iterations of it the thing that you're going to notice about this more than anything I think is uh, one is the performance of the radio because it is really amazing um, but secondly it's just how fast this thing boots up. I mean, it is an absolute rocket ship. If it was just based on a computer, that the the speed of startup is amazing. Software is the um, is pretty much um, the latest sort of version of it, and it's not. It's a version. It's a skin that I've not seen before. It's got much, you know, more rounded sort of buttons and um, all that sort of stuff, and it is quite. Um, it's not bad looking. It's still a little bit weirdly laid out for me. I think I would. Make some changes if if I were doing a bit more with the you know if I were doing something with the software, um, maybe there's sort of skins and stuff that you can you can get to add on to it. I, I really don't know because this is really quite an open source sort of project. The hardware is open source. Um, pretty much everything about it is open source, and that's kind of one of the the um, really good things about this uh, SDR. The other thing is as well now that it's well supported by. Um, like a third-party software people so if you don't want to use power SDR you can actually use things like um, uh, I think it's SDR console and um, amongst other things there's, there's other uh, pieces of software available as well so anyway so without uh, garbling on any more I'm going to take you through what's on the back of the the radio okay so let's get this thing turned around and it is a bit of a monster. <laughs> um, and then what we do is just swap over cameras. It really is a bit of a monster. Now, and I've actually broken out the um, the Magwell as well, so we can, um, or one of the um, Magwells, I'm, so I can actually just hook onto the back of the HMI, uh, HDMI on this, and we can actually see see it boot up and you'll actually witness yeah actually witness how fast it it, uh, it goes so it's pretty wicked right so okay i'm gonna now just whiz over to the the, the phone microphone the phone microphone whip over to the phone camera and i'm going to turn this one off okay here we have it the back of the of the set itself now, I'm not going to go into huge details. I mean, all this stuff is available on the web. So um, what I'll do is I'll just point you through the, the various uh, bits and bobs. You have an array of antenna uh, connections. And they range from um, like receiver ports right the way through just your basic an an antennas. Um, if you go to, um, if, you, if you pop along to the Apache Labs website, there's a really, really good... Um, brochure and breakdown of just all what everything does also in the power sdr software um manual there's actually some of the pin breakouts and stuff for things like this uh, this uh, accessory port so in a in general on the back we've got um anderson power poles and a little word of warning about those they're not in the conventional styly um most um power pole connections should look something like um should look something like that okay well they've fallen apart but hey ho put a bit of super glue on them um where if you look at the down at the anderson power pole it, when you can read the writing on the top rectangle okay rule of thumb is that the red one should be on the right okay so that you can read the writing um, but they've done it the opposite way around. So be warned on that because it is very easy to to plug those in the wrong way if you don't don't check and you've got a flex or something like that and you've plugged it into that, it will go pop. Um, what else we got in there? Okay, there's a fan outlet. Um, here you've actually got, um, that looks like it's a transverter port 
10 megahertz in that is a Wi-Fi antenna and that is an audio and um, antenna uh, sorry audio port so this here is the actual computer um, it's got HDMI a 1 gigabit LAN two uh, USB 3's and a USB C type port in the back um, that is the Wi-Fi antenna for the for the computer I'm guessing okay I don't know for sure but we can uh, I'm, I'm pretty certain that that goes with with this now the the there is a link cable that you you get with it which is a very short sort of um, sort of 8 inch cable which links the LAN of the radio to the LAN of the of the computer now you don't necessarily need that um, because I'm running it I've got a fairly advanced network here um, but if you've got something like a BT home hub or something like that I would just install a switch plug the two cables from here into a switch and do it that way it's just uh, it's much simpler um, and also then you get access to the interweb and all that sort of stuff unless you're using some form of Wi-Fi connection which I don't recommend when you're talking about lots and lots of data coming from um, like a, an IQ stream or something like that um, it, it, uh, it just adds an element of, um, of of chances of going wrong um, unless you've got fantastic uh, Wi-Fi then, then absolutely brilliant um, what else we got here we've got left and right speaker um, with 6.5 jacks we've just we've mentioned the um, the DC uh, output or oh, sorry the the um, accessory output port um, you've got key headphones and mic along the top um, here you've got CW key line in PTT in TX inhibit there's the um, right line in and then you've got PTT out okay so that is pretty much the back end of that that is your main window um, what you're going to need to do in the first instance is go to the setup go to audio um, and enable VAC1 um, by default that seems to be not enabled don't know why um, so enable that um, and away you go so just say apply um, and then by rights if I've connected everything up and I think I have it should spring into life there you go uh, what don't we have don't seem to have an area to bear with um, yeah here we go we've got an aerial um, Wow, we okay. The volume control. If anyone's my raw mouse, I'm running two machines here. So is is here. You've got um, RX one and RX two um, volume controls just over here on the left. To control to actually steer the thing, you just left mouse button on the blue or on the waterfall. And then you can just drag along. And is that a picture of some description? The noise reduction on this is incredible. Um, this is, I don't know what the time is, it's quarter to eight, so. I don't know what's going to be sort of around at the moment. There's a good signal. Let's try him. So we've got good noise reduction here. I don't know if you can hear that. Okay, let's just turn the volume up just a smidge. 
And that's running with the noise reduction, so it really gives everything a bit of a kick. The mic. Mic zero again. And if we turn that noise reduction off, makes a huge difference. So it makes a huge difference. Um, what I was saying earlier on um, about the the buttons and stuff, they 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 put this kind of nice rounded sort of um, sort of cartoon like sort of feel to it, and it's given the software a little bit of a lift. I wish that they would make this window just that little bit bigger, maybe the top half, put the controls at the bottom, sort of a bit more traditional. That would be quite nice. This is a, a bit odd for me. Um, yeah, on the top here, you've got quite a lot of control, including diversity, which I absolutely love. Um, if you've got two antennas, you can really, really make the best of that. Um, and um, I was actually thinking, I was um, speaking to um, Callum from DX Commander via um, the, his comments on his one of his videos. Um, that and. Um, just regards um, maybe using one of these with like a couple of DX commanders or something like that. I don't know what the detail would be to get that to, to function. That would be quite a nice way of doing it because the, the antennas need to be the same. That would be very, very nice. Or maybe even a couple of hustlers or something like that. Or, you know, I, you know, it's, uh, it's, that's an experiment that just needs to happen, I think. But this is just this particular radio is an experimenter's dream. It's just brilliant. Um, I'm not going to go too too much into detail on this because we do have some other plans. But um, and Okay, and the other thing that you can do here is you can select the type of um, display you have. Um, yeah, you can. You can. Oh, he's very loud. Um, yeah, you can you can select the type of display you have. Here I've got it split into two types. I've actually got it split into the pan adapter plus a waterfall. Um, and let me turn this one off. Um, yeah, and um, so it you get that sort of split screen, and you can maximise this if you want to to the the full size of the uh, the window. But I don't know if you can hear that. It's just incredible. There, there really is no background noise. <laughs> Just very, very good. Um, I mean, it's just like someone's turned the background noise off, and and it's fascinating um, just how good that noise reduction works. So, anyway, that's enough of that. I think otherwise it'll be a very boring video. Um, right. 
yeah, there's an awful lot of other stuff going on. I would recommend you download the book, actually, on this. Um, fantastic, um, you know, it's, it's a fantastic piece of software. It's been going, it's been around for a long while. Um, it's a little bit dated, I think, but um, on the whole, it is, it's very, very good. And that noise reduction is just amazing. But anyway, um, and the other thing as well, you obviously got pure signal here as well, um, which is controlled up here somewhere. Is it that one? Yeah. Um, yeah, you can you can do do some bits and pieces with that again. I would recommend you go and read the manual. It's it's fairly complex what that does. Um, it is just amazing. Yeah, very good. Right, okay, so that's a pretty rough introduction to the Anan 7000. Not my best. Anyway, next. <laughs> um, if you liked the video, then thumbs up. If you didn't, then thumbs down. But obviously, I'd rather you didn't put a thumbs down, but it's all the same at the end of the day. Um, by all means, leave comments. Um, nice ones, obviously. Got questions? Ask. I can always email the guys over in the States and uh, get some info on, on whatever you need to know. Um, but uh, happy days. So see you next time.